In this video, I'll be integrating from 0 to 1, x to the x, dx. Okay, but it's going to be a journey. First, what I'll look at is a couple limits. The limit as t goes to infinity of e to the negative mt times t to the n, okay, for mn bigger than zero and integers, okay? Then from that, we'll go to the limit as x goes to zero of the natural log of x to the n times x to the m, okay? Okay? And then from there, we can get the limit as x approaches from the positive side of x to the x, and we'll get one out of that. You can see black pen, red pen's video. So, now, let's start off with this one right here. I'll get rid of that right there. Okay, so I'll rewrite this as the limit as t goes to infinity of t to the n over e to the mt, right? Okay, so now this is going to be infinity over infinity if you plug it in. So using Le Hapital's rule, you're going to have the limit as t goes to infinity of n times t to the n over e to the m e to the m t, right? And then using Le Hapital's rule again, I get the limit as t goes to infinity of n times n minus 1, t to the n over m squared e to the m t. And uh, you can continue that on and on until you get n factorial, n factorial over m to the n e to the m t as uh, t goes to infinity, okay? And that, that'll be zero because m is bigger than, is uh, bigger than zero. It's positive, okay? So, I can reduce all those steps just so that that's what we're left with. Equal zero. Okay, now. Let's algebraically manipulate this, okay? So I'm going to let y equal the natural log of t, or, uh, sorry, I'm going to let t equal the natural log of y. t equal the natural log of y, or that y is e to the t, right? Okay, so I'm going to have the limit as y goes to infinity right? Because t is going to infinity, so y is e to the t, that goes to infinity. Okay, of e to the negative m, natural log y, times natural log y to the n. And we know that that's going to be the limit, as y goes to infinity. Right there, I can bring the negative m, m inside, so I get the natural log of y to the negative m, right? times the natural log of y to the n. Then from there, we can get the limit as y goes to infinity of, that cancels out, so I get y to the negative m times natural log of y to the n, right? And then making the substitution x equals 1 over y or y equals 1 over x, I get the limit as x goes to 0, because as y goes to infinity, 1 over y goes to 0, of, and then I'll get x to the m times natural log of x to the negative 1 to the n. I can bring that negative 1 outside, right? So I get negative natural log of x to the n, and then I can bring that negative 1 all the way out there, so I get this which again has to be equal to zero, cancel out that, and then look at that. This is what we're left with. So, using all of that, 
let's just write it over here. That's going to be one of the most important things we have. So the limit as x goes to 0 of the natural log of x to the n times x to the m is 0. Okay, so now what I'm going to look at is i n equal to the integral from 0 until 1 of the natural log of x to the n times x to the m dx, right? Very natural question to ask. Just integrate the inside of that. Okay, how, how am I going to do this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal the natural log of x. So that du, so that du, uh, sorry, natural log of x to the n, so that du is n times the natural log of, sorry, uh, so this is what I'm going to let i n equal to, okay? Then what I'm going to look at is i n plus 1, okay? The integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of x to the n plus 1 x m dx, okay? And then in doing this, I'm going to let u equal natural log of x to the n plus 1, du equals n plus 1, natural log of x to the n, and then I'm multiplying that by derivative natural log, which is 1 over x, dx, and then uh, dv, I'm going to let equal to x to the m, dx, so that v is 1 over m plus 1, x to the m plus 1. Okay? So now I'm going to have u, u, v, minus, uh, sorry, evaluated from 0 until 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of v, v, Okay, du, which is n plus 1 over m plus 1, right, times natural log of x to the n over x dx. Okay, so that 1 over x, m plus 1, that becomes x to the m natural log x to the n. Does that not look familiar? It's right there, right? But first, let's evaluate what's right in there, okay? So what is the natural log of 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus, and then the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of x to the n plus 1, x to the m plus 1 over n plus 1. Well, this, this right here is obviously going to be 0 because the natural log of 1 is 0 to the n plus 1 is 0. Oh, sorry, 1 right there. Right? So that's 0. Oh, and so is this because if I kind of remove that denominator which isn't affecting it, that's going to be 0. So if I just add that denominator back in, I'll still get 0. So that term means nothing. I can just kind of silently erase that term. And then I'm left with this right here, which is negative n plus 1 over n plus 1 times i n, right? Just as we discussed. Okay, so putting that back into here, I get this is going to be equal to negative n plus 1 over n plus 1 times i n, okay? Now this is important because if I figure out I1, I instantaneously know what all of them are. So I1, the integral from 0 until 1 of natural log of x times x to the m dx. Right? So if I know one of these, I know all of them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal natural log of x so that, uh, wait, let me... T, T. T equals natural log of x, so that dt equals 1 over x dx. 
meaning that uh, dx equals x dt. Over here, I get x equals e to the t. So that means that dx is e to the t dt. Okay, so let's plug that in. So this is the integral from negative infinity all the way up until 0 of natural log of x is t. x to the m is going to be e to the mt. And dx is e to the t dt. Right? Okay, so now I get the integral from negative infinity until 0 of e to the m plus 1 t times t dt. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal t. So du equals uh, dt. And I'm going to let dv equals e to the m plus 1 t dt. Uh, yeah, dt. So that v is going to be 1 over m plus 1 e to the m plus 1 t. Okay, so out of that... I get u, I'll get u, v, from zero, uh, negative infinity to zero, minus uh, v, v, Uh, du. Okay? So now let's evaluate this. So I'm going to cover it up. So what is the limit? So what happens if we plug in 0? We get 0. Okay? So really what this depends on is what we get when we look at the limit. So we look at the limit as t goes to negative infinity of t e to the m plus 1 t, and then I'll just factor out that 1 over m plus 1 out there. Okay? So what do I get here? Well, as you can see, it's not going to be uh, well defined, right? But if I make this e to the t over 1 over t, then I can get 0 over 0, Right? So this is going to be 1 over m plus 1 by La Hopital's rule. It's going to be 1 over m plus 1 e, oh sorry, not 1 over, it's just going to be m plus 1 times e to the m plus 1 t, and then over negative 1 over t squared. And that's not going to help. So what else could we do? Well, we could do the exact opposite. We could do t over e to the negative m plus 1t, right? Using La Hopital's rule, we get uh, we get 1 over and then negative m plus 1 times e to the negative m plus 1t. Now, I don't even need to cancel out any terms or anything because this is obviously going to be 0. Okay? So that's 0. And both of them are 0, so that term silently vanishes. Right? Okay? And then this integral is the only thing left to worry about. And out of that, I get negative 1 over m plus 1 times 1 over m plus 1. And then e to the m plus 1 times t from, zero, uh, from negative infinity to 0. Well, that's just going to be 1, right? So that's going to be negative 1 over m plus 1 squared. Okay? So now... <sighs> Negative 1 over m plus 1 squared. This gets us negative 1 over m plus 1 squared. Okay? So then I2, using this formula, 
is going to be negative 2 over m plus 1 times that, m plus 1 cubed. i3 is then going to be 3 times that, negative 3 times it, over that. Continue that down to i n, and you get negative 1 to the n, n factorial, over m plus 1 to the n plus 1. Okay, this is the general formula. And now, using all of this, we're now finally able to integrate. So the integral from 0 until 1 of x to the x dx is going to be the same thing as the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x natural log of x dx. Okay? But e to the x can be expanded using the McLaurin series. So I get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x natural log of x to the n over n factorial. You can switch those around a little bit, okay? So that you get this, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that n factorial outside just so it seems a little more obvious. This right here is i n where m is equal to n. We know what this is. This is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, right? And then we plug in n for m in here, so we get negative 1 to the n, n factorial, over n plus 1 to the, uh, sorry, n plus 1 to the n plus 1. n factorials cancel each other out. I get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1, which is 1 minus a half squared plus a third cubed minus a quarter to the fourth, on and on, and we're done.